I've spent 30 years studying natural climate variability and what we're seeing right now is not natural. So. My whole career has been focused on trying to understand how and why climate changes naturally. Uh, from on timescales of hundreds of millions of years to thousands of years. Try to understand why we have ice ages, try to understand how CO2 changes naturally, and how the climate responds to those changes. Dr. Maureen Ramo is a geologist and climate scientist working at Columbia University. She's the first woman to receive the prestigious Wollaston Award from the Geological Society of London, a prize once given to Charles Darwin. I asked her to explain the differences between natural and man-made causes of climate change. We can change our distance from the sun through time, which we do through the wobbles of the Earth's orbit, and that, that is why we have ice ages. Ice sheets wax and wane according to how far the slight changes in our distance from the sun, and that's been changing over the course of four billion years. Neither the Earth-Sun distance nor the solar output can explain you know, climate changes on that, that are happening now. I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the science, you know, the problem of global warming is kind of beyond the realm of science at this point. It, it's, it's in the realm of how do we deal with this problem that we've created and it's going to almost certainly lead to global warming and rising seas and, you know, collapse of ecosystems. We know that CO, the important role of CO2 because we've studied past climate change, right? If we hadn't, if we hadn't understood why there were ice ages, if we didn't know that our the Earth's sun distance was changing over the course of ice ages, we might have looked at an ice core and thought that the entire climate change was just due to the change in CO2. So you know there is this symphony going on in the climate system. The Pliocene is a period of geologic time that lasted from about two and a half to five and a half million years ago. And it's significant because if you go back three million years, you get to a climate that was significantly warmer than today, and it was characterized by an atmosphere of 400 parts per million, which is a level that we recently broke in the atmosphere through man-made emissions. But right now, we're living in a world with a Pliocene atmosphere, but the whole rest of the climate system, the ocean's trying to catch up, the ice sheets are warming, everything's trying to catch up to this Pliocene atmosphere. So we have these very divergent estimates of how much ice there was on Antarctica and on Greenland in the Pliocene. And so what we're trying to do is figure out, you know, what did the, what did the Pliocene look like? You have, we know what this atmospheric CO2 is, uh, how much ice was there? You know, when everything comes to equilibrium, how much of the Antarctic ice sheet will be there? Will sea level have risen 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters? Historically, I can see the climate community has always underestimated the rate of change in the climate system. So 